Hey guys, welcome back to Honeycomb. My name is KO. We're here in the lab um, to do another unboxing and today we're talking about a performance pair of sneakers. And so this will be both a review and unboxing of this shoe, but also of the Jordan 1 Low Golf. Uh, kind of an update about it and why I ended up buying this shoe. But if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If you do like the content, click a thumbs up. And also, we just unboxed this one as well. This is the Eastside Golf Jordan 1 Low. A nice special collaboration sent over by Jordan Brand. Beautiful sail midsole, all new buck upper. This is not a performance sneaker. It has a regular Jordan 1 outsole. If you want to know more about this, make sure you also look in the comment section down below or we'll try to put the link up here. Or just make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of these posts. And let's talk about this box. So it comes in a regular orange Nike box. On the sizing tag, it says Nike Zoom Infinity Tour Next Percent W. W stands for wide. And let's open up the box. And here they are. All right, so in comparison to all the other shoes that we unboxed on this channel, I'm not gonna lie, this one is a little bit more boring. We're talking about a plain black sneaker, waterproof, two-year waterproof warranty, that's nice. And these are for playing sport, they are for playing golf. Let's talk about the feature of the sneaker, starting with the traction. Now, this is really what makes a golf shoe a golf shoe usually. Before, golf shoes used to have metal spikes, those got banned, then they got plastic spikes, and then we got the spikeless revolution where we got a lot of sneakers that look like turf shoes. So as you can see, this silhouette has two pairs of spikes, two in the front, two in the back. And I found that the reason I bought this shoe, uh, or one of the main reasons I bought this shoe, is because I was sliding down hills. When it's wet on nicer golf courses where there's more sculpting, more of a gradient to the curb, sometimes you're really standing like this, slipping down a hill, and you do need the spikes to hold you in place. So honestly, I really thought that we had gotten rid of the spikes and maybe we didn't need them anymore, but turns out you do still kind of need them when you're playing more, let's just call it serious golf. Um, and maybe the spikeless stuff are better for things around the clubhouse, like uh, driving range or putting green practice. Uh, but for 18 holes, you kind of want the spikes. Another thing that you do want is a very comfortable midsole. And that's where the Nike React comes in on this sneaker. I've been measuring the distances that I play golf in and usually it's between six and eight kilometers per 18 holes. And I actually do not like to use golf carts because I want to stretch out my time, I guess. I like walking. I really like walking out in, um, in these beautiful parks where we, that we call golf courses. And as a result, sometimes it really kills my feet, especially in those Jordan 1s. At the end of the day, they are Jordan 1s. So I swapped out the insole from an Ortholite insole to a polyurethane insole that I got from my Jordan 11s. And that was one of the ways that I really realized that, okay, I need React in there. I need a great uh, technology for walking. And then also added in are some air units, some zoom air units, as you can see here. Two pods, one on either side of the forefoot. And you see a nice little call out there, it says air. I don't know why it doesn't say zoom, it's zoom. But uh, you see those tensile air fibers in there. Moving up, you have the upper. Plain black in all of this, except for some call outs here where the Nike swoosh is. A little bit of gray on the toe. But this whole thing is done in a knit that's been wrapped in a waterproofing material all black and then the lacing system is held together with fuse we see a lot of fuse on this silhouette heavy heel counter leather here and lots of padding around the collar that's what when you swing you're twisting a lot against those lateral sides of the collar inside we have a this looks like an ortholite insole um, and it says inside nike air zoom infinity tour next percent design for champion golfers for championship golfers i should say and yeah this feels very much like an ortholite but it doesn't say ortholite it says reverie pdi must be a different technology i've never seen these before um, but you're less reliant on the insoles on the sneaker because you have that setup of zoom air and nike react inside the sneaker now also in the box you have your nike golf waterproof warranty this is a limited warranty 
um, and I've actually been able to test my uh, my limited warranty quite a bit with my uh, with my Jordan One lows. Um, they got rained on significantly through the top and they filled up with water. That means it's waterproof in both directions. I had to spend several days drying them out. So I thought, okay, let's get a pair of sneakers that can work in any weather, can answer the need for me to have a sneaker that I can walk eight kilometers in and not feel my dogs barking like crazy. And then finally something that will help me not slip down a hill. I actually got them on the Big Friday, Black Friday sale um, over at Nike Park. BGC. So while I did have the uh, privilege of having these Eastside Golf sneakers sent over, these ones actually did line up and go inside the chaos of, of that giant 50% sale. The entire store was 50% off. Uh, so I picked these up um, for I believe 4,000 pesos. As a result, a great pair of athletic sneakers is a great investment, especially if you play a lot of sport especially a spot like golf where you really have no choice but to get all of these kilometers and steps in. Um, I did want to show you my current golf shoes that I've been using all year. These are my Chicago Jordan 1 Lows and they've really taken a beating. Look at that. So these guys are really beaten up. Luckily the leather is really good quality and stood up to the wear and tear. Um, plus all the times that I use them just for lifestyle, they're great for that because they're waterproof. Um, I actually just recently wore these to Singapore because um, we went to the zoo and the botanical gardens um, and Universal Studios, all places that you get very um, moist and wet to go into wet environments. And, uh, and so I, I brought these sneakers on purpose. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I have taken out the insoles and swapped them out for the polyurethane Jordan 11 insole. Um, but other than that, they've held up really well. Uh, I've just decided to stop golfing in these sneakers because I really like them and I want to continue wearing them for <laughs> for lifestyle uses and as a good rain shoe. But you can really see that in the year that I've been wearing this really worn in that heel. And you can see the white starting to show through the traction. Now look at the difference in traction between these two. It really is night and day in terms of like the comfort level that you can expect and the grip that you're gonna get on turf surfaces. So, as much as I love you, my Jordan 1 low G's, I think I will not be playing much golf in you anymore. Um, it really did break my heart to be standing in very significant rain and playing through the rest of my uh, 18 holes um, in this pair of sneakers. But that last time I played in them, I shot my best score ever. So I believe it was 96, I shot a 96 um, in the rain and so much of it was just like getting out of my own head and hitting that ball. And if you guys remember when I unboxed those sneakers originally, if you did watch that video, it was part of a goal of, um, of breaking 100 in 2022. I'm proud to report that I was able to do that in June, so it took me six months uh, to do it. It was the first week of June, so I went from shooting one uh, I believe 126, 128, um, all the way down to 98 on that day. And then about a month ago, I managed to shoot my best score ever playing golf at uh, 96. Um, should I set a goal for 2023 for what my score is gonna be like? Um, I don't know, I, I think maybe I need to set a goal for how few putts I make. Maybe that's a more realistic goal. I, I think break 90 or break 80. It's a lot harder than breaking 100. I'm proud to have broken 100. And uh, to be honest, I actually started playing golf a lot less after I achieved that goal. So maybe I should give myself a more difficult goal. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you have any questions, I will be able to answer them in the comment section down below. Oh, sizing, they do fit true to size in normal sizing. So almost all of the golf shoes are W shoes, meaning they are wide shoes. And usually that means they're wide in the front. And I tried on the entire line of Nike golf available here in the Philippines for men. And they were almost all true to size in W, except for the cheapest one, except for the, the most um, entry level one, which was the, uh, I believe it's the React Infinity. And these ones, I got my true size, 9.5 men's. They don't make it without the W, so I guess it's true to size. 
All right, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you want to know more about our golf shoes that we've covered in this channel, watch the uh, Jordan 1 Low Golf Review and watch the Eastside Golf uh, Unboxing. What are your goals for 2023? How's your golf doing? I wish you guys good luck. I wish you guys good health. Break 100 if you haven't. Peace.